Hey YouTube, got some good news. Finally got a blacksmithing forge for uh, coal and charcoal. My uh, wife found it today when she was driving out to visit some uh, relatives and she saw a yard sale, a bunch of old gas cans and whatnot she saw out there. She told me though that she was worried that I wouldn't find anything worth buying, so uh, I think she almost didn't want to tell me in case I spent the whole trip for nothing. But, you know, whatever, I figured I got nothing better to do today. I might as well go out and see what they got. And son of a gun, they had a, uh, a rivet forge for me. And here it is. Not a very big forge. Um, just big enough. It's kind of a hand size comparison. It's probably about a foot and a half across. And what's really cool about it, though, is that it's hand crank. It has a uh, blower built onto it. So, you know, you crank on here. This crank turns this wheel. And you put a belt from here to the blower, which I have no idea how I'm going to figure out how to find or make, but whatever. And I'll turn it over here for you guys, kind of a better look at it. So there you have it. So again, you know, you just would turn this wheel here. Turns this wheel and turns the forge. Got it for 50 bucks. I'm pretty sure that's a pretty good deal. I honestly don't know. I'm not sure how much a forge like this goes for. I've seen the large rivet forges go for about, uh, well, I'd say about $120, $100. Those are in pretty good shape, though. And they, they're a lot bigger, and they have a bigger blower on them. So I don't know. I think I got a good deal. And my, there's my cat inspecting it. He hasn't seen it yet. The one bad thing about this thing, though, is it is filthy. I've bought and restored quite a few tools over the past couple of uh, months and this is by far the filthiest. You can kind of look down here and see where I scratched to see how much gunk is on it. And I mean here, here, I'm gonna have to take that entire housing apart with the blower and clean it. A ton of rust on it. I mean it's just, it's everywhere. But it looks like it's in decent shape. It's not burnt out. Missing a few uh, bolts. I'm not sure what they're for. You know, those two right there. I, I know that bolt was for the, um, to mount this on there. But yeah. I'm excited. Finally got me a forge. I'll uh, be posting pictures of it as I clean it up and whatnot. Oh, God, I'm not looking forward to cleaning this thing at all. I mean, God, look how it is it's just junk on it everywhere it's just so baked into this thing oh well it'll be a labor of love so as I uh, clean it up I'll be posting pictures so I'm working on cleaning off the blower here and as you can see just the gunk on here is just caked on the only thing I can Think this would be from is the oil that you put into a blower to get it to keep from seizing up and you know keeping it lubricated when you run it. But um, God, I had no idea it was cooked that coated to this thick on here. I mean, just dear God, so this is taking a lot longer than I thought. I was actually hoping to have most of this clean today and ready for painting, but uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. I came home yesterday around uh, four o'clock. After I got the forge, I started working on it right away. And before I knew it, my wife was calling me saying she's on her way home from her cousin's graduation party. And it was 8 o'clock. I couldn't believe it. I just completely lost track of time. So, yeah, well, uh, and I was hoping to actually take this housing apart to get inside this blower and clean that out. But, uh, God, the bolts are so rusted through and. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get those off. I might have to end up uh, cutting them off just to get it apart. And I'm not even sure if I want to do that. I might not be able to get it back together again if I do. But, uh, we'll see what happens. There's my cat watching my every move. All right, so I've got the blower mostly scraped off, and just brushed off, and it's made one heck of a difference. 
I'm actually not even sure if I'll need to use a uh, cleaner on it or not. I probably will anyway, though. I'm starting to get a little worried about this thing. I uh, was trying to clean off some of the bolts on the bottom here. And, uh, oops. One of them actually just broke right off. So, I was originally going to take this thing apart so that I can, uh, you know, clean the uh, tweer and blower out. So now I'm not so sure what, how that easy that's going to be. I'm probably going to have to cut all these off. But uh, we'll see what happens. So far it's turning out uh, pretty nice. I like how it looks so far. Alright YouTube, well I've got the crank assembly here all cleaned off. Nice spick and span, got all the crud off of it. Um, so now the next thing I'm going to try and do here is I'm going to try and clean some of the rust off of the forge here, off the pan and off of the uh, housing unit here for the blower. I managed to unseize the screws and bolts holding in the holding the housing together for the blower. Unfortunately, the big bolts here on the bottom of the uh, forge are, I think, just too far gone. I don't think I'm going to get them off without breaking them. So, in order to try and get the rust off, I'm going to try and use this uh, simple Gree concentrated cleaner. Now, this stuff normally you're supposed to water it down, but I'm just going to spray it right on there and see what happens. But I also want to kind of experiment and see how well it actually works. So, on this side here, I'm going to use just the cordless drill with the brush. And on this side, I'm going to use the brush and the cleaner. Now, one thing to note, too, is when using anything like a drill like this, safety glasses. I know it seems kind of ridiculous that I have to mention them, but trust me, the one time you don't use safety glasses will be the one time you get one of these metal slivers in your eye. And I've seen what happens when you get one of these wires in your eye, and it's not pretty. So you think you could just pull them out, not always the case. They usually have to cut them out, so safety glasses. Cheap, inexpensive, and it'll save you a lot of heartache. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a try, and let's see what happens. So here's the results. Now here's the side that I just used the drill and the brush. I alternated the brush in both directions to try and get as far down to those pits as you can. And you know, it did a pretty good job. It got down pretty far to the bare metal. Made nice and shiny. I'm happy with that. And now... Here's the results with the simple green. I think the results speak for themselves. Uh, and I probably only put about half the work into this side as I did the other side. Not only did it get further down when it was cleaning, but uh, I think it cleaned it a lot better. So it looks like I'll probably be using simple green on the rest of this thing. I'm actually going to switch to my corded drill. This drill is amazing, but uh, it's just too draining on the battery. I mean, these these drills. If you don't have one of these kind of modern cordless drills, you're uh, missing out on a lot. These things are insanely powerful. But uh, just for the constant amount of work that this thing needs and for all the, uh, I guess, the beating I'm going to put this drill through, for this project, it's not worth it to destroy this brand new drill. So I'm going to go get my corded drill. That thing is indestructible. It'll never break. All right, so I'll post more pictures as they come. Alright, so I've managed to get the housing off of the blower. Thankfully, these pins that I saw that were peened over were not attached all the way through. Uh, it was on a separate rod here in the fan. But, uh, God, once again, I just cannot believe how filthy this thing is. I mean, look. At all of this stuff. A lot of blowers now have a oil container on the side that you fill up with oil, and that as you turn your fan, it will sp kind of spray this oil on the inside of the fan. I'm guessing this didn't have that, so you have to throw the oil in manually. But uh, I just can't, that's got to just be oil and dirt. I don't know what else it could be. So I've managed to get the whole thing apart, and looks like I'll be able to clean the whole thing. So after I scrape this thing out and brush it down, looks like it's going to be time to paint. I think I'm going to be pretty happy with this thing. Hey YouTube. Well, I got the forge all finished and restored. 
I think it turned out pretty nice. Went with the Case International look like I was originally planning on. Um, alternating the colors here, like on the fly, different flywheels and this crank wheel. I think gave it a really nice look. Thing runs nice and smooth now. Uh, I still haven't gotten a belt yet to run the fan, but it too runs nice and smooth. Uh, you probably notice a difference in the color or the um, the shine of the paint here on the black here versus here. Uh, the paint I used here is a high temperature heat paint. This paint will uh, resist to temperatures up to 2,000 degrees. <clears throat> so now steel melts around 2,300. So I'm hoping that this will uh, this won't uh, burn or chip and crack, except maybe during forge welding. I did manage to find a couple of numbers while I was cleaning this. Um, we have one number here that says D8, and on the other side of the fan housing, there's one that says D7. We have a mark <clears throat> right here on this shaft, D66. And there's also uh, one right here on this wheel, D4. Now, I haven't been able to identify this forge yet. I haven't found a picture of it online anywhere. I haven't uh, heard anyone talk about it. All the other rivet forges are usually a lot bigger. <clears throat> they come on long legs and a much bigger bowl. This one's a little bit smaller, but I still like it. Uh, hopefully, one day I'll be able to identify it. If anyone out there knows who made it, I'd be happy to hear it. Well, actually, there is one more marking right here. C46, where you dump your um, ash. So, um, I've got it all painted and restored. Now, there's still a few things need to be done. I need to put another leg from here down to the floor. I need some kind of heat shield to wrap around this part of the forge for when you're turning the forge and your arm doesn't get hot, your face doesn't get too hot. And I'll probably eventually one day put this on some kind of mobile cart so I can take this to demonstrations. And <clears throat> yeah, that's it. It turned out a lot nicer than I thought it would. I'm really happy with it.